right. Hello and welcome to the Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Andy Rudin, who is in Virginia. How are you doing, Andy? Great. And Andy's the uh, managing principal of Contrary Domino, helps B2B companies identify, assess, and manage a broad spectrum of revenue risk. And he has a book coming out in next year, um, in the fall of next year, in September, uh, around ethical selling. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that before we get into our topic today, Andy? Sure. The The topic is, just like you said, it's about uh, ethical selling or, or really uh, sales ethics and primarily about how to voice your values when you're in a situation that you may feel uncomfortable. And there's a, a long list. And since this is a sales audience, you can probably already uh, relate to something you've been asked to do or something you've encountered in the, in the workplace that you've thought, hmm, I'm not quite sure that sits well with me. And that's really the, the core of what the, the book is about, is helping people identify what their own values are and how to respond when they feel those values are challenged. Great. Well, that's today for today's um, conversation. We're going to just focus in on that piece about what should salespeople do when their values are confronted at work. So for, for a start, Andy, um, maybe give a couple of examples of what that looks like when somebody's, because uh, some of the people listening may not have had a situation like that yet, or maybe have had a situation, but haven't recognized it. Sure, sure. Yeah, if you're if you're new to sales, you may not have encountered a situation. But if you've been in sales for, um, you know, any period of time, it could even be uh, that you're you're uh, new at selling, but you've been in an organization and and started to work with customers or have been uh, through some sales uh, training and development, and something has come across uh, since. Uh, uh, selling is a persuasive uh, or is, is in the business of persuasion, something may have come along where you felt like, oh, that, that stretches the truth beyond what I'm willing to, or what I'm, com not, not necessarily willing, but with what I'm comfortable saying or doing. Uh, that's just one example, but it's a common one that occurs in day-to-day -day selling. And let's face it, Andy, in those situations, I mean, somebody may be saying to you, oh, yeah, okay, it's a little bit, it's stretching the truth a little bit, but hey, everybody does it. And the customer, yeah, they, they understand. They're, they'll, um, so, I mean, there's a lot of pressure on people often just to go along with things. So what what are some of the ways that if in that particular situation when you're asked to maybe stretch the, the truth a little bit and you're starting to feel uncomfortable, how, how does somebody address that? Well, the, the first is, is recognizing what your own values are so that uh, you're not just being prescribed something like this is very common. Oh, well, salespeople should never lie or a half truth is the same as a lie. And it's very difficult to to partition that without being able to internalize it and say, well, look, I, I know it's not good to lie, but here's what my own values are and here's here's what I feel comfortable with. So that's that's number one. So as an example, um, to, to get at the answer to your question, um, we're all used to claims like, oh, well, we're the tops in the industry. Uh, our software product is better than anyone else's. It's faster. It performs better. And uh, to me, that's, that's a persuasive tool that may not be some one person may say, well, that's not truthful. But another mm -hmm. person may say, well, look, it's incumbent on my customer to understand they're dealing with marketing, they're dealing with sales. This is these these are common claims that, that most vendors will make in order to put their best foot forward. Um, going further would be a claim that says our product uh, has this specific capability, this feed and speed, this throughput, this mm -hmm. this power, this this performance. And if it is patently false. Uh, that to me is a more serious uh, situation and one that if if it's a manager or if it's a marketing department that's putting that uh, edict on the sales force and say, well, just tell them this, uh, but it won't be ready till our next release, but we want you to tell our customers that mm -hmm. now. Uh, that would be something, for example, that would definitely conflict with my own sense of values. And I, and I would say, well, 
I'll make that claim when the product is proven, when it's actually out there, but I'm not willing to do that before it's it's a market reality. Yeah, so I mean, in situations like that, so I mean, that's an that could be an uncomfortable conversation, right, for a salesperson to have, particularly if they're not an experienced salesperson. Or uh, so, what what is the what is the best way of them, you know, bringing up a subject like that or expressing, you know, their lack of comfort, especially as there tends to be a lot of peer pressure in work as well, right? Oh, sure, and there's a lot of rationalization for that. Um, a new salesperson can say, well. Look, I'm new to the company. I don't want to make waves. Uh, somebody else could say, well, it's the, it's the way the organizations, uh, it's the way they do it. Uh, this is pretty common here. And, um, you know, why, why should I be the one to go rock the boat? And somebody else may say, well, my team depends on me being able to sell, sell or hit a certain number. And if I, you know, if I'm not willing to, mm-hmm. to step up to what my boss is asking, then I'm going to jeopardize the the quota for the whole team. Uh, there's a lot of rationalizations for that, but the, I think the first thing is to to understand where the uh, where the other person is coming from. So why might marketing be asking to uh, asking you to make this claim? Why might they be saying it? And <clears throat> instead of being at first judgmental about it, think of well, okay, here's here's the reason that they that they want me to do this. And then stepping back from it and looking at, well, if I do that, what might be the result with the customer? Well, uh, it's going to break down trust. If they if they learn that uh, it's not ready this quarter, but it's three quarters away, um, it's going to um, uh, be inconsistently applied because maybe not all salespeople will Mm. will be on on board with that message. And so customers are going to hear different things. So there, there's a lot of very good business reasons that a, a salesperson is, is, is certainly understanding how to make a business case. And this is yet just another reason to do it and say, well, here's our business case. We have some issues with making claims that are not, not true. And then to explain that, to bring it to management more in a rational way, not by saying, oh, well, you're, you're bad because you you told me to say something that's that's not true. Yeah, and I think that's a, and I think that's an important um, you know way of of approaching things. It obviously is uh, you know you have to be discerning as well, right? Okay, and you have to separate out from the from what's from what's real and what's and what's perceived. But I think that I think nowadays there's more of an appetite for openness maybe than there previously was. Would you say that? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it depends on the organization. I think there, there's certainly a, um, a, a greater recognition that uh, companies have to walk an ethical line. And there's certainly a, a no shortage of stories in the news about what happens when they don't. And so mm-hmm. uh, those cases can can also be brought up and say, look, I know you, you know, you just wanted to start with this marketing claim, but we've got to understand what are the consequences if we're not fully truthful or fully, uh, uh, if, if we're not clear with our customers about what is, uh, what we do and, and what we actually don't do. So that's, uh, I, I think a, a lot of executives are, are, are certainly more aware of it, whether they, they want to take action is another story. <laughs> What are some other um, examples, maybe more nuanced ones? Because some of these, I mean, there are some ones that are kind of obvious, right? You know, when you're asked to present things um, that are patently not true or whatever. But what are some of the more nuanced ones that maybe people struggle with? Is this okay? Is it not okay? I'm not really sure. Sure, sure. Yeah, there, there's um, really a, uh, uh, you know, it depends on the the, the day of the week and the uh, the month of the year as something new comes up all the time. Uh, there's situations where customers may uh, understand what's riding on a, on closing a deal for a salesperson and ask for an, an off the books favor uh, that, that comes up, or they may want to skirt a, a, a certain issue. Gee, you know, if you can just invoice us for X uh, I can get this in on the budget uh, this year. It may not be copacetic uh, for mm-hmm. accounting purposes, uh, but the customer's asking that. And, uh, 
uh, salespeople are often put in the untenable place of having an order held out to them and having to do something that may not be in entirely uh, uh, within the regulations or, or even legal. So uh, that's, that's another one. And then uh, issues around, uh, you know, we're, we're asked to handle confidential information, customer uh, uh Customers may disclose things to us that are uh, uh, proprietary or not to be shared beyond, and and uh, yet the the next sales sales call we make is with a competitor of of uh, our prospect who also happens to be a very good customer, and and uh, it's it's very tempting to to uh, or or it can be tempting to to share information that that really shouldn't be shared. So uh, salespeople constantly in, encounter situations where these values, uh, one's values are called into, uh, uh, often called into conflict. And what is it, I mean, what is the long-term uh, value for a, for a salesperson of maintaining a high set of values? Because sometimes it's, as you said, I mean, sometimes it's hard, you know, when you're confronted with you know, peer pressure or situation where people go, ah, come on, you know, you're making a fuss about nothing really. I mean, but what is the long-term benefit to you by, you know, figuring out what your values are and sort of sticking to them? Well, I, I think Philip Broughton said it best. He he wrote a book that I, I just uh, think is, is fantastic called Mastering the Art of the Sale by uh, Philip Broughton. And his his core question is, what are you willing to do for a buck? And I think we have to ask ourselves that question mm -hmm. every sales call, every or every day, every sales mm -hmm. call, every time we have a customer interaction, we have to really reconcile it and, and feel comfortable with ourselves and say, well, here's here's what I'm willing to do and, and here's what I'm not willing to do. And if you don't have a boundary, uh, then that's that's where you run into problems. So I think the uh, to the integrity question that you ask is, you, you know, we we have to, we, we may not be with our employer for forever, but we have to live with ourselves for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I in, think that's, yeah. And I think that's the really important point there is, sure. and, I, and I think you touched on it at the beginning too, is the fact that, I mean, you have to go and figure out what your own values are. I mean, and if you can't, if you don't do that, then you don't have a, a barometer going forward. That's, that's absolutely right. And that's, that's where I ask, uh, I, I think it's, it's strongest for people to make their own judgment their own decisions there and not not hew to i mean the code of conduct that companies uh, sometimes maintain and and sometimes uh, profess is is important it's 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 good to see those guidelines written in in black and white but you can't uh, constantly look outside of yourself and say well here's here's what i'm allowed to do or uh, as i often hear the rationale well if it's not illegal uh, then it must be okay. Well, the fact of the matter is uh, laws and regulations cover just a tiny shred of what we encounter day to day in business. So we have to make decisions that go way beyond that. And, and that really comes from our values. Yeah. And, and that comes at that point is, you know, just because you can, or just because it's not strictly illegal, doesn't mean you should. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. Well, Andy, um, we're coming up against the end of our time, but before we go, I want you to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more about you. Sure. Um, I'm uh, uh, a B2B sales and uh, business development strategist, and my company specializes in uh, what's called governance, risk, and compliance, which is mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes abbreviated hashtag GRC. And these are really the business processes and rules around how uh, sales and marketing is is governed within a within a company and making sure that it's it's done to preserve the interest not just of uh, uh, the revenue and profits that a company makes but also the uh, looking out for the interests of all the stakeholders, employees, investors, customers, suppliers, anybody who's who, who may have a direct or even a tangential interest in, in the sale. And so those are the matters that I get involved in. And uh, uh, that's, as uh, is, is you asked at the beginning of the conversation, that's the subject of my book. Yeah. And we look forward to your book coming out next year, the book on, on um, selling or ethical selling or selling ethically. What, what is the actual title of the book? Yeah, the working title, it's called Win, 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 Practicing Ethical Selling in the Age of the Stakeholder. Love it. Win, win, win. Well, we'll look out for that book next year. And then, Andy, you'll obviously come back and talk to us about it when the book is out. Uh, again, my name is John Gold and Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.
Thanks, John.